session we plan to cover just a couple of slides on the solution overview for data intelligence before going into a short CCAR use case using our technology to provide you with an understanding of how the data intelligence tool resolves the need for data compliance. What we see is that since 2008 there's been a hundred billion dollars in regulatory fines. This particular regulatory pressure map that was produced by the Federal Bank of New York indicates that with each new regula regulation that's introduced the pressure ring continues to strengthen. So companies are hiring firms uh, for one-time efforts, manual efforts to respond to these initiatives as they arise. We've seen um, these evolving banking regulations through uh, KYC, Know Your Customer, ensuring uh, that that due diligence and pop proper sanctioning um, and accurate risk ratings are being captured and applied. There's Dodd-Frank, CCAR, CFO attestation was introduced in 2016. GDPR and the right to be forgotten is another new initiative underway in 2018 across all different verticals. So what we see is that clients really need, um, have a need for automation versus a one-time effort. Uh, they're looking for accuracy in their audits. They want to be able to trust and rely on this information. And the key to everything is flexibility and providing a solution that can change with the times. One of the, the key concepts with our technology is that unfolding of business and IT collaboration. So by linking business context to the precise physical attributes, you start to really achieve data accuracy and trust. Um, establishing this regulatory policy awareness and building it into your key data elements, you start to establish this accuracy and trust. Um, as you're creating and curating your physical information, um, you're doing that in accordance to these regulatory requirements. So our basic solution has over 230 different scanning devices that uh, provision information into a centralized metadata repository and it provides a browser-based user interface to be able to show um, lineage and be able to print, be able to uh, share this information across other tools with, with our API system as well. So it gives you that transparent view of data from end to end according to that semantical meeting, meaning. Um, so how are our clients using this technology? Um, some of the things that they're doing to meet their audit requirements are definitely automating the view of where that data is sourced versus loading it in with spreadsheets or just guessing at how that data resides and, and manually inputting it. Um, they're performing that audit online with the auditors or printing it straight from the user interface. They're subscribing to the BI regulatory reports um, so that they can understand when a change occurs, how that change is affecting um, that business rule, that regulatory requirement, um, perhaps the actually the source of the information might change as well. So they're becoming much more proactive in that change detection. Um, taking point-in-time lineage snapshots is also important. So to be able to go back a quarter, um, uh, uh, annual on an annual basis, and show where that data was residing or where that data was being sourced from and how it was being sourced is also important. And generally, creating that repeatable process across all the different lines of business allows them to manage and report their audit in a consistent method across the organizations. And the auditors are impressed. So what is some of that um, technology that differentiates us from other lineage products in the marketplace? One is uh, what we refer to as zero gap data lineage. And this is something that we've spent a very long time preparing. We have a application discovery and understanding tool that gets at the information from a code level perspective inside of that application. So whether you're on the mainframe or in a distributed environment, we are able to pick up that code, parse through it, and understand that lineage all the way out to your uh, database system, your big data lake, and then through to your BI universe. 
So there are other um, competitive features around this lineage that we've expanded upon to include um, those snapshots as well as what we refer to as stitching, which allows you to plug a gap quickly. Um, it's not meant to fool anyone. It has a dotted line versus a straight line, and it's governed so that as you become more and more automated in your report, you're still able to prove out and provide the evidence for an audit that you can get from the source to the target and really understand where that data is coming from and what's happening to it. Um, and finally, you are able the, the end users are able to communicate and collaborate on this lineage by reporting issues and seeing those issues to resolve. Another key feature of this data lineage is to be able to understand the quality of the information um, that's being reported at an element level. So um, and the end user can easily understand whether or not the data has met the threshold required um, from a corporate standpoint for their data on their key data. Key data elements to understand, hey, is this um, where we need to be and where is this information being propagated perhaps if the data has not met that threshold and information on who that owner is um, and where that data is residing is also available. So that connection between the business information and the technical information is typically drawn through the critical data elements. And within our technology, as you're traversing through the lineage, you'll be able to see exactly where those critical data elements are affected. And if there's any sort of change, you can immediately detect the impact of that change from both a business and a data perspective. And finally, um, another very key feature of our technology is to be able to um, onboard new lines of business in an easy workflow process um, mechanism. So what we provide is a work and process area for each line of business to own their data and to augment and curate that information as it's being scanned in and once they're comfortable with it they can push it to that enterprise view and you start to be able to understand how the data is residing across many lines of business creating and supporting that enterprise view. With that, we're going to go into the CCAR demo and show you a glimpse of how our technology works. So for this particular use case, I'm in a VM environment and I have several different desktop applications including this um, a PDF file that contains my FRY9C report and from a risk analyst perspective I'm responsible for the numbers that are showing up on this report the different line items and for the sake of this use case um, we are going to be very honed in on this particular number for loans so loans secured by real estate um, and this end user has noticed that the number continues to rise at a very extraordinary rate. So one of the things that I can do is roll over this particular line item and over to the right hand side I have a pop-up that shows me how the business has modeled and how this business has reported on this particular line item. I can see that it was found in the finance glossary, um, the context in which it's being governed, which is under the trading and assets, assets and liabilities, um, the business term definition, long description, any other terms or policies or procedures that it's connected to, as well as the critical data elements that are associated with this particular line item. Now to further my research, I'm going to go into this, this system to get a better understanding of where that data is coming from. So as I click into the environment, I can see that this particular line item consolidated amount um, has that good business information and references and that it's connected to a particular report. So when I go in and perform my backward data lineage on this particular report field, I start to understand immediately where that data is coming from. So from a business perspective, we may want to start at an application level to get a good overview of how the systems and how the data is moving. So 
In this particular view, we understand that there's several different business applications that are feeding a risk calculator environment, and it also runs through the data warehouse and then out to that CCAR reporting environment. So there's my high level on the movement of this data. I'm going to go back to my detail level and get an understanding of exactly how the data is traversing to that particular field on the report. And at a glance, I can see that it's going through several of those hops um, using quite a few different fields. And I have um, turned on my data quality metrics, and it's guiding me to say, hey, these critical data elements have met the threshold. Um, they're A-OK. -okay. I don't see a problem here. But in this particular case, the USD amount has not met the this threshold. So there's several different pathways that I can take from this analysis, such as where is this information being propagated to? And for that, I'm going to do forward data lineage. And I can see every line item um, that is sourced from that USD amount. I can go back to the um, backward lineage and understand exactly which files are, are the source for this information. So we can see that um, there's files coming from the Americas, from Europe, from Asia Pac, etc. And now I want to really investigate exactly what's going on inside of the extract transformation and load that's moving this data across to USD amount. So it looks like right about here some problems might be occurring. So as I double click on that transformation and load rule, I can start to understand what exactly, what data is being used to move. I can see that SQL script and I can understand that there's quite a few different columns or fields that are involved in that move. I can see the from, the to, who owns it, if there's been any past issues reported on this data supply chain. And here we do see that um, another steward has recognized that this number is increasing. So what I might do next is say, okay, so definitely there's a problem with my data. Um, the data quality doesn't seem to be up to par. What was it last month? So let's go in to navigate the understanding from our lineage snapshots. So within the lineage snapshots, I have taken monthly views of that particular CCAR report. So as I hit that monthly view, and being that I own this data supply chain, I also have it saved in my favorite. I'm gonna bring up that favorite, and again, look at it from a detailed level, and get a perspective of how the data changed from last month to this month. And what this diagram is telling me is that the gray boxes mean that there's been no change from last month to this month. However, when I move backward in time or backward across the lineage, I can see that native amount was added to my aggregation and calculations. And I can see that more data has brought in um, more information that might be the culprit of why my amount on my end Axiom report is increasing. And um, it's pretty clear here that native amount was what caused that to increase. So um, in this perspective, we did look at it from uh, a technical perspective. Uh, we looked at the data quality. Um, we went in and understood what it was last month to this month. So the snapshots were really important. And the last bit that I want to show today is that same lineage only from a more business perspective. So if I go back to my CCAR report, and again, I'm going to go to that detailed level of information and start investigating it from an impact analysis around references and usages of USD amount. And right away, I can see that there's some data quality measures um, other columns, other data types associated with USD amount, and there's a critical data element field here that provides some important information on fair value in USD. And to get a view of this information, we're going to do 
uh, we're going to perform traceability and understand the complete lineage from a business context. So here we see that that critical data element, uh, fair value, um, has several different business rules and a policy defined for that critical data element. And um, to get a good understanding from a, a quality standpoint, I can double click on completeness. Um, here it tells me that it cannot be null or blank. I can go into who are the stewards for this particular business rule, the history and the details. <clears throat> and I'm going to go into the actual measure that was taken for completeness and look at the results and within the results I can see that they change and each one of these are time stamped as to when the data was profiled and what this tells me is that it changed over time I have a problem it's definitely turning red and it furthers my investigation from that business standpoint and we can see where that information is moving to the critical data element and then back out to that physical world which is where we started so for that for this um, particular use case this is a, a, a summary view of what I wanted to cover for today uh, please see ASG.com 